<laughs> that we have such unoriginal and pat boring movies here, but we want to introduce the co-writer director of Beyond the Gates, Mr. Jackson Stewart. We will have uh, we will have casting crew. Who do we have here for after the film? Yeah. Uh, after this is on. Hello. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, after the movie, we'll have uh, me, uh, Barbara Crampton, uh, Chase Williamson from John Dies at the End, and Bria Grant from Heroes and Halloween Two, and a bunch of other stuff. Give a give a, give them a little non-spoiler vibe on what they can expect from the other. Uh, if you like movies like The Gate or Phantasm, this is pretty rooted in the DNA of that stuff without directly lifting from it. So I, I'm, I'm a big fan of 80s supernatural adventure horror movies, and I just feel like there, there are not enough of them. So that was, that was the main idea with doing this. And uh, yeah, aside from that, if you do like this movie, please tell your friends. If you don't like it, please keep it quiet. We <laughs> do not need the bad word of mouth. Um, but oh yes, uh, so IFC Midnight is going to be putting it out. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Sometime either at the end of 2016 or very beginning of 2017. I'm meeting with them on Tuesday, and I will tell all of you how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I, it, it'll be on Blu-ray, VOD, DVD, and. It'll be, yeah, yeah, in, uh, you know, a few cities theatrically, so, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, enjoy the movie, guys. Thank you all for coming out. Please stay for the Q&A afterwards, and again, if you like the film, make sure you go on Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, hit the, uh, the Groovy Fest, and be on the gates. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Uh, yes, could I get... Barbara Crampton, Bria Grant, and Chase Williamson down here. We might just have to share. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> First off, I'd like to give a round of applause for one of the cast members who's not here, Mr. Graham Skipper. Yeah. In my opinion, a fantastic young actor who brings a gravity and a, uh, a sweetness that you don't often get from a younger actor. He's, uh, and he's, by all accounts, one of the nicest guys in the world. Absolutely. Why don't you uh, tell us about the casting process that you have here? Uh, basically, all the, the lead roles in this were written for Graham, uh, Chase, and, and Bria, and if, if you hang out with them at all, like you'll probably get a sense of that. Uh, you know, I, I think early on, Steven Scarlatta, my co-writer, he was one of the producers of Jodorowsky Stan. Uh, him and I, which is great, by the way, if you haven't seen it, it's an, an incredible documentary, but um, basically we, we just felt like there's a lot of good actors we knew that we could probably utilize in, in interesting roles, and there's Barbara again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it just came from their personalities, and it, it's sort of, I, I mean, Chase's character is basically like me, and then Graham's character is essentially Steve, so. Uh, I don't know if I've said that before, but. Um, I don't think you have, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there, that that was a big oh. part of it, and I've just been friends with everyone in here for years. So uh, you know, it, it seemed natural to cast my friends in that. I, I would like to ask the actors because they they've all been fairly prolific in genre films. I'd like to ask them what what they think uh, stands out in particular about this project. Can I also just say that like people ask us about the casting process, but really here's how it goes. Jackson calls you and he goes. Hey, you gotta come do my movie, and then you have to do Jackson's movie. That's like exactly that's exactly how the casting process went. Oh, oh, to answer your question, um, I think what stood out about this script and the story for me was just like the brother dynamic and how it's all based. Really, it's grounded in sort of a, a human story, and I have two brothers, 
So, you know, I grew up liking stories about brothers, <laughs> uh, Wild America, for example. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really connected with just like the, the human aspect of it and, and the, the genre stuff was just a cherry on top for me. Yeah, I have to echo that as well because um, uh, Jackson had been trying to get me to read the script for a very long time. And um, when I finally read it, I, you know, I've been in a, a lot of horror movies that have a lot of blood and guts and you know cool shit like that but um i was really moved by the story of the brothers and um you know their dynamic and you know searching for their dad and trying to become young men and trying to become the people that they want to be and you know that is a rite of passage for every young person and uh, it really, you know, his writing really rang true for me in that, and that's what moved me to say, wow, I, I love this story. Because every good horror movie is influenced by the characters, and you have to have a good foundation of the characters, and I, and that was the aspect of it that was most important for me, and that, you know, they got. So, I loved it. Hey, what'd you got? Um, yeah, I mean, just I, thought, I mean, the script was really good. The script was a really fun read, and um, I'm like all these guys. We read a lot of scripts, you know, and a lot of times they aren't full stories. They're not fleshed out well. The characters, there's something you know missing, and there was nothing missing from the script. It was, you know, the characters were well thought out. The story was well thought out. It had a good beginning, middle, and end, you know, and it also had like a really fun like '85s even to the script. And um, since we all kind of grew up in that era, the exciting to get to be a part of. Did you have a, a VHS? games when you were a kid? You... you know, I actually didn't. I I was more in into like just eighties horror movies and I just would get my hands on everyone I could find on, you know, Friday night. I I rent like eight of them and then you know watch them all that weekend and i, I was uh, thank you <laughs> i was certainly familiar with them like but the animator perhaps oh yeah, i've seen it like a hundred times but it's uh it's it's one of these things where I, I was very familiar with vcr board games and i i wanted to do a story like this for a long time about you know some family dynamics and some drama and you know get a little bit into some character work and it, you know for the longest time i was just like i can't figure out like what the engine of this would be and i i met uh steve scarlotta my co-writer and he said uh he was like you know i always wanted to do a movie about a vcr board game that opens to another dimension and i would at, at that point i was like that's the best idea i've ever heard we need to start writing on that today and um I think everyone Steve had ever, ever pitched that to thought it was a terrible idea, but I, I loved it and I, I think he's a genius. No, it's a so. cool because A, as a device, there's, I don't, can't think of another horror film that's used, thank you, that used the VHS game exactly. as, as a yeah. narrative I, uh, point. And, and it's also too, it's one of these things like, I can't believe no one has done that mm -hmm. at this point. Because as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's such a, a smart way into a story that's able to kind of connect all this you know 80s thematic stuff that i i really grew up loving and uh that, that was really it you know it just it it felt pretty interesting and of course like once we started it you know i played like you know the four versions of nightmare and you know and like any any of the other ones that i i could get my hands on which uh, was pretty difficult but <laughs> you know there a lot of those games like doorways to horror and stuff are very confusing. I don't know if you any of you guys found, have played them. You guys but, found yeah. a good way to. <laughs> you guys found a good way to. You do a very old type, very old fashioned story, but with the the MacGuffin here is not uh, a Ouija board or uh, something possessed, an item that you found in the garage. It, it's a new MacGuffin, and I think it's very clever. Even if you don't know that VHS games existed, yeah. you explain it pretty well. well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and that, that was the other thing too. Is I remember when I was pitching this to financiers, there was so many people I'd say like, oh, it's about a haunted VCR board game. And they're like, what is a VCR board game? <laughs> and so it, basically every time I would just have to give a, a short summary of it. And um, yeah, you know, I, it just, it felt to me like it would be really interesting to use that too and sort of do their version of the, the throwback horror movie, which in, in my head, I was like, oh, it'd be cool to do like a Black Sunday Mario Baba style like horror movie vcr board game which is you know a lot of the, the layout of the board is kind of reflective of that but i hope that answers that did you get to work with the with you obviously you didn't 
act with them, but did you get to come on set and work with them at all, see them at all? Uh, I was on set a little bit, just in the very beginning. Um, uh, but yeah, but I was a producer on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so all my stuff was shot in the very beginning of the movie. Um, and then it had to be degraded enough to look like it was old and then into the TV it went so that they could react off of it. So when we were actually shooting that stuff in sort of this faux dungeon, Jackson said to me, okay, well, maybe our heroes are gonna be here when you're saying this line, or maybe they're gonna be here, or maybe they're gonna be there, we don't know. So um, we did it a lot of different ways so that hopefully it would work out. Yeah, well, we did not have the house when we shot with Barbara. Like we basically found that, I found that house probably uh, you know, three weeks before we started shooting, so yeah. it was a uh, it was a really close call. But yeah, we had to had to do quite a bit of planning ahead. And I was one of those people that was like, "What's a VCR board game?" I didn't know, and I was playing the host. Um, but initially, um, somebody else was going to play the host, but I wound up playing it at the at the very last minute, like just a few days before I was supposed to shoot my my stuff. And um, I'm really thankful that I didn't watch the VCR board game. <laughs> because it was a little cheesy, because um, I, wa I watched it after I shot it, and I just, you know, Jackson told me to watch uh, a couple of movies that he wanted to influence my character, like um, Barbara Steele from Black Sunday, and then um, Sister Ruth from Black Narcissus, and uh, so I just, you know, I did exactly what he told me to do, and he said, don't blink, just don't blink when you're talking, about that. <laughs> and uh, somehow he just really felt like that would do something, and but I'm glad I didn't watch the VCR board game stuff. I thought it was cool, and I, I understood it even without watching that stuff. I got what you were going for, but I'm glad I didn't watch it because they, if you watch any of those, they're so overacted, and, I, and I'm an overactor enough, so if I had seen that, I, I would have been way out of line. Guys, guess what else? When we push that, that tape in, we weren't even playing it off that tape to DVD. Yeah, How about that? Although, wait, 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 wait. Also, just so everyone knows, we had the we did put that onto a VHS tape, and we recorded it back and forth through five generations. So it has that those scan lines and stuff. So it's it, it we played it off the DVD, <laughs> but it did go through the VHS process to to give it that more graded look. It's just the tracking. Exactly. <laughs> you have a whole generation now with like adjust the tracking. Priya, <laughs> Chase, tell me something funny that happened on set. Oh. Um, I don't know. The people that owned the house, Jackson found the house by just like walking up to the door and knocking on it. And yeah. like, hey, you're right. And the people that owned it were kind of like kooky cat people. And um, there are cats everywhere and it smelled kind of like cat piss. Um, I think they may have been like slightly deranged, but we thank them for their <laughs> service. Right? Um, yeah, <laughs> they they bought us ice cream too. They were really nice. They, they were, were super nice deranged. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, I don't know you. And we shot there like all night long, so they were pretty nice considering we Fine, were there like all great. night. And, uh, I don't really have anything. I will say, anytime you see me sleeping in this movie, I'm really actually sleeping because we were shooting at night and I kept getting tired of falling asleep in the bed. Yeah. So Grant would be doing a scene and I'd be like, oh crap, am I asleep or awake? You're like, you know that feeling where you're not really sure if I was actually sleeping through a lot of those scenes? Method acting. Yeah, extreme right. method. I'm going to ask uh, the audience if there's any uh, questions for these people, these fine filmmakers. Up there on the left there? Was uh, the video store, um, was that an actual video store or was that a set? It was a real video store. Wow. And it's it's Shot still in operation. I've, I've been a customer there for years. It's called- In LA? Yeah, it's in Los Angeles. It's in North Hollywood more specifically. It's called Eddie Brand's Saturday Matinee. They're open uh, four days a week for five hours. And on Saturday, they're open for eight hours. So if you're ever in LA, Go check out Eddie Brand's Saturday Matinee. They have a ton of stuff that has, I actually like never been on any home video format that they've gotten directly from the studios. So I've seen a ton of just crazy shit that 
you basically can't get access to anywhere. So I, that's like I Bernie Geek's biggest claim. Like you can't get this anywhere else. If, if, well, they, they basically will take prints and like transfer it onto DVDs and stuff. And they got the day the clown cried. Over there. <laughs> yeah, they do. My favorite, my favorite line it to me. was Leanna Quigley's horror workout. <laughs> Linnea Quigley. <laughs> Linnea. Leanna. Linnea. Linnea. Miss Quigley. <laughs> right there, sir. There's a poster in the background of that store. Was that something that they had there? Oh, I'm really glad you asked me about that. Okay, so that's a movie called Where Dad. Yeah. And uh, there's there's another one called Jesus Heist in the back there. And and I got that from my friend Chad Pfeiffer, where he, basically, this sounds super weird, but he was working as a marketing guy when Scream 3 came out. And so they were like, oh, just come up with a bunch of posters. And so he came up with Where Dad in Jesus Heist. And I was like, I was like, dude, we have to use those because it's like their dad's a monster and all this stuff. And I, I thought it was like cool thematically. But um, I basically was just, I asked him if we could use those because they, they had a few other posters up there, which you can see a few of them. There's like Chud and some other stuff back there. But uh, Where Dad, unfortunately, is not a real movie. However, you can yeah. find it in the background of Scream 3 if you, uh, you're on the lookout. There's an exclusive. Going to be directing and writing a film called Where Dead. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I like most about the movie is that you're rooted in character and you're almost like the audience knows it's going to get to the scary stuff, but you are clearly, willfully saying to the audience, you're going to wait because I want you to like these brothers and this woman. Yeah. And we're not just going to introduce them, give you a big horror scene, and then come back to them. You let the characters breathe. Yeah, I mean, the this, this stuff that I really respond to now, it, it just kind of takes chances and like it moves away from, you know, more sort of more of like a familiar formula because it's like everyone in here, I'm sure, you know, we've all seen Friday the 13th a million times and, you know, every other 80s horror movie you can imagine. You but speak is my favorite. <laughs> that's a classic. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we very deliberately wanted it to you know, take its time, and then when the violence happens, it would be really shocking. And, you know, I want it to be like a big payoff for the movie. And I, I just, too, it, it also, The Gate, I think, has some really interesting stuff where, you know, it takes a little while to get into the, the fun bit, but like you really care about all the characters yeah. by that that point. And that was what we were, we were trying to do something similar on the, the writing level. How about you guys on that, as far as uh, focusing on a horror film where a good, uh, at least half of it is just character base, no scare, just we want to set up the characters first. Yeah, we love that we're actors. <laughs> <laughs> we love it, and it's amazing. I mean, and it, I mean, yeah, and it's cool. I mean, I think, obviously, it has, like, a creepy vibe, you know, to the beginning that we are playing towards, you know, in some way, but, yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's, it it's tough, very, though, it's that fun. you have to ask an audience to be a little patient? Is that hard? Yeah, it is I, hard, yeah. I don't know, you guys are taking, taking a risk. risk. You're taking a risk. people are taking it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a risk, and honestly, there there were so many points where I think we showed it to different, you know, foreign sales agents or something. They're like, oh, if you just had like a, the opening was just like the dad got killed or you know like sucked into the game or something. Add an extraneous character and then you kill Yeah, him. exactly. And I, I just, it's like I've seen so many movies do that, and I'm just like, God, I just want to see something different, you know. And um, I mean, and usually, it, whatever. It's like we, we could name a dozen, you know. We could name hundreds of examples where that works well, but I just I felt like for what we had on the budget and you know the the resources available, I was like we should you know maybe try to approach this a little differently and see if it works. Uh, Barbara, you uh, I think you're generally on your sets. You're like a den mother. You kind of very motherly and and kind of take over and help everybody in their own way. Cause you, the, the veteran, you've made dozens of films and basically made what four. Uh, well, like, <laughs> more this year. Uh, so my question is, how, how much different? How much different was it for you to put on the producer's hat and, and do that kind of work? Um, you know, I'm just starting into this pr producing uh, aspect of my career at this point. But I have to say, working on this movie, I didn't have to do as much as I thought I was going to have to do because Jackson took the reins and ran with it, and uh, he. He produced the movie as well and was just amazing in every aspect. I mean, he, you know, to make a movie today is a miracle. And um, he had the tenacity and the drive and the desire and uh, really, you know, gathered all the people behind the 
the scenes and in front of the camera uh, for this movie. And he also has a background working with Stuart Gordon. He was one of Stuart Gordon's interns, so I yeah. think you learned from one of the best. Um, and Thank you. yeah, <laughs> and so really, I felt you know like I was a sounding board for him a lot of the times. You know, and he's not afraid to ask questions like, well, what do you think about this? Should I do this? Should I do that? You know, I I feel like I helped him as as just you know somebody who would aid him in his decision making. Um, you know, there's a few things that I actually brought to the table, um, but you know, it's a collaborative effort and. Um, I, I, I have to say, I, I really believe, you know, for his first movie, he was, a, you know, an amazing captain. He just did a, a great job. Thank you. Anybody else? Right here? So, um, I loved the lighting aesthetic that you had going on in a movie with the magenta and the blue. And having just seen Night of the Creeps and From Beyond this weekend, they kind of do the same thing. Is that where you got that from? Is there a reason why you, you chose to do that? It's a great question. Um, there was a handful of movies we were, we were looking at. The, the big one is, is The Gate, as far as like a lighting aesthetic that we were, we were pulling from. Uh, from Beyond, definitely, though. The, I mean, it's kind of in the title, too, which we sort of got that from. But. Um, yeah, From Beyond was a really big influence there, and then actually the, the Rennie Harlan movie Prison is <laughs> is one of them too. Uh, yeah, actually it is, and uh, there were a few others. You know, Poltergeist is in there a little bit with you know uh, the the backlit stuff with the hazer coming through, and you know, it's all foggy and crazy looking um, with that blue light coming in. I'm a, a big fan of that, but yes, is the answer to your question. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else right there? Yeah, I'm so glad to be seen doing the CGI in this movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, the makeup effects we had, it might have been partly due to part of the budget we had too, but Rainy and Tom Savini uh, killed, as you saw in a lot of the 80s movies. So I haven't watched the movies for a long time before the movie, so I, I appreciate that. It was very well done. Was Thank you. Choice to do a, a uh, avoid percent Yeah, I mean, it, basically all the, the decisions in in the production were based around what the constraints they had in the 80s were and we were we were trying to stay as close to those as possible so you know we didn't want any like crazy crane moves and stuff and we, we were really trying to shoot it you know kind of in a, a similar style to phantasm the gate and poltergeist and the beyond and from beyond and a lot a lot of these other things but all, all the effects it's basically you know, I, I mean, it, when you're on set doing it and like something doesn't go right, it's somewhat frustrating, but it's like you, you still just, you end up fixing it in, you know, 20 or 30 minutes versus having someone, you know, work on it in their computer for several weeks afterwards. And it's never going to look half as good as a bad practical effect. I mean, it, like you can, you can go and see a movie made for $300 million and they have digital blood in there, and you're like, oh, well, I know what I that think is. It's funny <laughs> that people seem to be a lot more forgiving of subpar practical than they are of subpar digital. A hundred percent. I'd much rather see a bad practical effect than, like, it, I think most good visual effects are, are usually, you're like, oh, I can kind of tell, but eh. it, it's like, it just feels inauthentic, I think, and it, it's nice to, to have that. And I, I'm happy that's kind of making a comeback at this point. Good gentleman right here. Yeah, I was curious. Um, it seems that CGI just seems to be taking over and it makes me like being a filmmaker myself, I can't stand it. I think it's just <laughs> it's terrible, you know, but it seems to be the direction it's going in. If this film was supposed to be taking place in modern times, would you be able to convey it using CGI? Well well it is taking place in modern times, well, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry, and not trying to go for the eighties. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think I would because it, it's just, it's one of these things like, I feel like this, this sounds really mean, but I, that's fine. Uh, I, I think like most of the best CGI was done in the, like the, around Jurassic Park and like right. the kind of like late nineties where like you kind of couldn't tell it was CGI. I and can, I can accept the yeah, but I mean, it, it's, I don't know what, it, I think it's just because of these, a lot of these bigger movies now get made on really crunch schedules, and they're basically still trying to finish the VFX before, you know, like two weeks before the release date, and um, 
it's why you go and see a lot of these movies and they look somewhat unfinished and yeah, I forget you know. one director who said it, but he said something like if you can do it on set, practice it, practice on set, do it on set. A absolutely. I just think there's like no excuse not to do it practically. So I'm I'm with Especially you. for a movie like this. You know, this movie is you know, it's not the kind of movie that digital would really fit well. I mean No, not at all. I wanted to run through the, the cast real quick uh, and wrap up with a question of do, if you were, if you found out that your next 10 films were going to be horror films, would that be cool with you or would you, would you not, would you not take that? I'd be, even if my next 10 films were just with these three people, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> and I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I like doing horror films. My next few movies coming out are definitely horror films or genre films of some sort. I mean, I love doing genre stuff. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah totally agree. I mean, I just want to work with good people, good films. I have a script right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll check it out after I see your movie. Now, it's probably silly to ask Barbara this, uh, but we will. Well, I, you know, mostly worked in horror movies. And What's special about the genre? What, 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 what makes it different than drama or action or thrillers per se? It pushes the boundaries of what you're comfortable with. Um, it's a thrill ride. It takes you places you wouldn't normally go. Um, but that being said, you know, in answer to your question, I feel like it, it's all rooted in character for me. It doesn't matter what the movie is. If it's a great character, and has a you know a good through line, a good beginning, middle, and end, and you know there's something the character is fighting for. That's what's important to me. Yeah, that's a great way to end. Thank you all for staying. A round of applause for our director and our cast for Beyond the Gate. If you liked it, please hop on social media, tell your friends. It will be out. Uh, later this year or early next yeah, year? Yeah, it, it's coming out through IFC Midnight either for the end of 2016 or very beginning of 2017. So we'll all- Tell your friends. Yes, thank you. <laughs>